The Jungle, The Rolling Stones, and Napalm. That's right, it's time for Top 10 Messed Up Things That Happened in the Vietnam War Part 2. Number 10. Live Long Enough to Become the Villain Saigon isn't Saigon anymore, and while many great efforts were made to thwart the Viet Cong, the finger quote good guys lost. There's a little bit of irony in the story, however. Think about it for a second. America was a colony who fought a very hard battle for their independence against the most powerful foreign power at the time. Fast forward to the Vietnam War, and here they are trying to fight a war for independence against the most powerful foreign nation. Different in details, but mm, the same in broader terms. Sadly, it was a tragic loss of life on both sides, and while you always want to pick out the hero in every story, in war, it's not exactly black and white. More of a gray area. Number 9. No More Heroes Looking at photos of soldiers coming home from war, you'll see people hugging, cheering, laughing, kissing, and raising a glass to toast the return of their sons and daughters. There's a famous picture from VJ Day that you've probably seen as a sailor kissing in the streets. However, sadly for Vietnam vets, the return home was not with welcome arms, cheering crowds, or celebrating of any kind, really. The veterans were met with pretty much the opposite. Vietnam was the first war to ever really get the media coverage that it did. For the first time, Americans at home got to see what was going on. And it wasn't pretty. Over time, disapproval for the war grew to the point where it was protested and soldiers did not receive the care that they needed. As much as we'd like to meme nowadays with Vietnam flashbacks, these soldiers' mental health was not dealt with. PTSD, depression, and a country that didn't want them were very real for shell shocked men returning home. Number 8. One of many wars. Despite Walter Cronkite and Bob Hope's coverage of the war, and that's kind of a joke for people over the age of 60, Vietnam was a war in a series of armed conflicts during the Cold War. Yes, for Americans, it was the most memorable to say the least, but there were many hot wars that took place during the Cold War. I'm not really sure how it got that name, but okay. The Vietnam War was a byproduct of the Cold War, just like these other wars and conflicts. For example, the Ethiopian Civil War, the Ogden War, the Dominican Civil War, the Six Days War, just to name a few. Vietnam was the last time US forces would fully send troops on the ground like that for at least a few years. All the previous wars I mentioned were more the style of proxy wars. Basically, the United States and Soviet Union would vicariously fight through much smaller, less powerful nations. Basically, it's like getting your big brother to fight for your little brother. Number 7. Rainbow Chemicals Remember the last time when I talked about Agent Orange? Well, there was actually a whole rainbow of colored lethal chemicals used. Orange for trees, Agent Blue to destroy their rice supply, and a few other varieties and colors as well. They became known as the Rainbow Herbicides. The side effects of these chemicals were horrible creating birth defects in children whose parents have been exposed. Many people still live with these conditions and unfortunately, children born today still have birth defects. Clearly this stuff is awful and should never be used again. I went to the chief's lab last night and he took a look at the chemicals and he said, that's not it. Number 6. Ho Chi Minh The man behind the madness, or at least the communist revolution that he so desperately wanted to take over. Born in 1890 in what was then Indochina, a French colony, his beginnings of being a leader and anti-colonial views started quite young after being expelled from a school for such beliefs. He eventually found his way to France in 1919, where the Treaty of Versailles claimed Vietnamese freedom. His pleas, however, were not heard. A Japanese occupation during World War II and a rise in communism in the East was slowly adding ingredients for a revolution stew. Weird metaphor, but let's run with it. France, wanting to take back their colony, had started the Vietnam War. Now in charge of the communist revolution, it would be a decades long fight with America and South Vietnam before claiming their bloody victory. Could have been prevented, that's crazy too. Like he went to France and he's like, give us freedom. They're like, no, sacre bleu, you go back to where you came from. Number five, helicopter war. Probably the most iconic iconography of the war is the Bell UH-1 Iroquois, or better known as the Huey. The Vietnam War was the first war to see extensive use of helicopters. And honestly, I'm not sure how Americans would have fought the war without them. One of the main reasons the Viet Cong were successful was because they knew the land. They knew the jungle and used many tactics to their advantage. Oftentimes, the jungle being their best weapon of defense itself. 
Even though chemicals and napalm are being used to help unjungle the jungle, it's the extensive use and effectiveness of the Huey helicopter that gave America the technological edge it so needed. For anyone that was actually there, I can just imagine the relief of soldiers that they must have felt when seeing those green beauties come barreling out of the sky. The helicopters turned out to be a great design and was used for many years after the Vietnam War. Number 4 Draft Dodging Grade 12, what a great time to be alive. You're about to graduate. All your friends are excited about spending one last summer together before everyone goes off to college. Maybe you'll spend some time down at the beach, go hang out at the mall, or maybe you'll find a summer fling at a summer party. Nice. And just as you were about to put those bell bottom jeans on, your mom says you got a letter. Oh no. You just got drafted into the Vietnam War, and it looks like you'll be spending your summer looking for a guy named Charlie in the jungle. That's weird, I wonder where he is. This was a reality for many young Americans who found themselves looking at a piece of paper that either meant they could die in a jungle or be in trouble with the law. However, when option A and B suck, go for C. In this case, that was draft dodging. Americans who received the mandatory volunteer letter fled in decently large numbers to other countries so Uncle Sam couldn't have his way. Many ended up here in Canada. Number 3, Napalm Girl. I briefly touched on this in the last part, but Kim Fan Tee deserves a moment of her own. There's a picture that made it out of the Vietnam War known as Napalm Girl. Well, Kim is that girl. Again, we cannot show you the image due to its graphic nature, but it's basically screaming Vietnamese children running down the road after a napalm strike near their location. Unfortunately for Kim, she was an innocent victim of total war. Her clothes were burned off and her skin was severely damaged by napalm, leaving her with scars and reminders of a horrible past. Almost 50 years later, she's still around to tell the story and how she used faith and forgiveness to forgive those that caused so much pain and destruction to her country and herself. The photograph of Kim is probably the most infamous image of the war in maybe the 20th century and is a part of the media coverage that helped inspire Americans to pull out of the war. Number 2. I don't think we're in Kansas anymore. Good old Tricky Dick had just become president, and he had a plan to end the war in Vietnam. But first, they had to invade Cambodia. Why Cambodia? Well, basically the Viet Cong had this genius idea of moving war goods, materials, and troops on the Ho Chi Minh Trail, but also moving through Cambodia, which at the time was neutral. The US just wasn't looking there at first, however, when it was realized it would be a tactical good decision to stop that from happening, for poor Tricky Dick, the invasion of Cambodia felt like he was furthering the war rather than trying to bring it to a close. To make matters worse, the Pentagon papers were leaked, and it was discovered that America had increased involvement and not decreased. The people had had enough, and anti-war movements sparked across the country. It wasn't too long after this that they pulled out of Vietnam. And Cambodia. Number 1. The Music A lot can be said about the Vietnam War, but if sitting through history classes and watching some old movies doesn't paint the picture, then sit down and have a listen to the music that was made during the conflict. A lot to do with counterculture at the time, once the Vietnam War went into second gear, art began to have its take on the Far East conflict. Books, movies, plays, but nothing more reachable and mainstream as music. The Doors, Rolling Stones, Jimi Hendrix, and the classic CCR. If your thoughts of Vietnam don't feature Fortunate Son by CCR, is it really a thought about Vietnam? I say no. This is kind of disturbing as when you compare it to music one decade prior, it's completely different. Despite baby boomers causing havoc on minimum wage retail workers today, their music is pretty good and does a good job of depicting the emotions felt in such a grim situation. Yes, I love the music. I, I love the music of the American people. <laughs> That's going to wrap it up for me today, guys. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe here at Bumblebee. We're almost at 100,000. I know we can get there. And if you want to see more of me, check out my socials linked down in the description. I've been your host, Big Ched, and stay sweet, my little honeybees. <laughs> Please say the chief line. Say it. Go Canada. Yeah. <laughs> Draft dodging. That was, that's supposed to be serious. We're gonna stop the war in Vietnam, but first, I'm gonna invade Cambodia. That doesn't make any sense. Why would you invade another country? You're, you're stupid.